Well, good morning, everybody. You're joining me on the River Tyne today. This is my first cast on the Tyne this year, so I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm not here by coincidence today. I'm here for a reason. There's been a really, really, really big tide. The water's dropped to a good fishable height, so you know what it is. If there's going to be a chance of a fish in the Tyne early, early on, it's going to be probably here. We're going to fish hard today. We're going to fish right into darkness because I think that's probably the best chance. I'll explain how the Tyne works later on when we get into the fish pass pool because that's probably the key pool here today. So anyway, I'm on Stifad. I've got Carla with me for now. I can't remember whether um, Carla was allowed to fish here, but actually from what I remember, it wasn't that suitable for her anyway. So we're going to go for a little walk out with Carla. All right, so here we go. We've made it to the river. Here's the fly we're going for. And unsurprisingly, it's uh, themed on the fly that I caught my fish on a couple of weeks ago. This is the first time I've been out since then, so I didn't want to come out and spoil my record. I'm one for one. So I thought I'm only going to fish again when there really is a chance. Now, this is tied on a copper tube, so it pretty much weighs a ton. It's basically, it's called the house brick. So we're going to chuck this just now in the fish pass pool. So as you can see, this is the fish pass. And this is the main temperature barrier on the lower part of the River Tyne. That's pretty much the only main temperature barrier on the River Tyne. And it's quite an obstacle to get up. Anyway, that's Bywell on the other bank. That's where you saw me having an absolute nightmare this time last year with my casting. And whilst I was having that nightmare, I watched the guy on this bank catch a fish. So he was, he went in further down and it was just under that broken water there where he hooked it. But I thought, I can't resist having this little deep channel here. I'll just put a fly through that just in case there's anything resting up. So anyway, here goes number two session of the year. I'm looking forward to this. So I've got an intermediate head on here with a 15 foot intermediate tip and then a five foot fast sinking poly leader. So I am beefed up for the job. I'll just bounce this fly around in here for a while just, just to be sure we've caught everything. And as per the last time I was out, obviously it's going to be a day of dredging the bottom as much as possible. Hence the house brick. Nice colour in the water, it's just got a nice peaty tinge going on. House brick's doing its work, look. So as you can see, I've got blue hands today. And it's not because I've been eating silver. Look that up. Stuck. 
know it's because I got a pair of merino fingerless gloves in my knee I'm trying to keep them dry. I don't want to get cold hands because you can't fish if you got cold hands. My toes I can pretty much take it. Although my toes are already are starting to go in there. It's not that the water is that cold, it's just I'm a bit of a fanny by nature to be honest. I don't like the cold. I think it's because I'm a baker and I'm used to a hot and steamy environment. slow and steady here and I'm fishing immediately as soon as the fire hits the water it just sinks I don't really even have to put a mend in That's on the cold salmon. Apparently it's very successful. on the feet like that. Oh. I don't know if anybody's experimented with electric socks whilst they're weird you know, or whether it's a fire hazard or an electrocution hazard I don't know it seems like it would be a good idea
as you can see I came prepared with a box full of house bricks. Well, we've had a bit of a snag with the fishing, I've lost my shooting head. So as you saw, I cast out there, caught a rock and unfortunately the welded loop on the running line that I was criticising earlier for being sticky, well it's snapped. So I've lost my head, my tip and my poly leader on the end of it, as well as the fly. So that's a bit of an unfortunate situation. On my other reel from a switch rod, I've got um, an 8 weight Rio switch chucker line, which I hope is going to be heavy enough to flex this rod. If not, I'll just have a, have a cast later with the switch rod, but it's not ideal. There doesn't seem to be anything around so far, so obviously I fished most of the way down from the, uh, the fish pass pool. What happens there on this bank, it starts getting really, really deep, so there's, there's only so far you can go. I didn't get to the end of it, uh, and hopefully I'll have a cast in there later on this afternoon. But it's about 12, half past 12 now, I would say. So I'm just going to have a quick coffee and a, a reassess of the situation. Cheers, by the way. So, to all the congratulations that I got for catching my spring fish, this one's for you guys, thanks very much. It felt like I was catching one for all of us. Okay, so I'm back in the water after a coffee break and we've re-rigged with the switch ch chucker line which actually seems to be going out okay on this rod so that's quite nice It would have been a bit devastating if I couldn't fish on So there's two rods on the water today, me and there's another guy um, The other guy literally is just starting out, I mean he's got a pair of wellies on and I think he's been watching me as well so Hello to him. Uh, but anyway, he's just left. No, he's not. Sorry. He's going to leave shortly. I think he's just having to go in the fish pass pool just now. So I've left him alone to get on with that. And I thought for all time's sake, I'd come and fish the beaches pool 
which is where I caught my two fish when I was here the year before last. So we'll just have a little cast in here now. From what I remember, the fish lie over on the far bank. So I'm just gonna wade quite far out. But um, I'm not gonna waste too much time here. That actually goes nicely, that um, line. So yeah, I'll just have a quick half hour in here um, and then I'll go have a bit of hot food, I think, because I am rather hungry. And then we'll have another go in the fish pass pool for the afternoon stroke early evening. Okay, I'll give it a couple more casts and then I'm going to go back and check the fish pass pool out. So it's a big point it's being here really because if there's any fish around they're not going to be in here. Certainly in the back end this probably will be stuffed with fish and very well worth casting into but not today. Right, it's time to set about lunch. So when I'm in here I'm going to show you a couple of the innovations that I've made. So I still haven't finished this van because I've had a very very busy winter time. But I did make a few little customizations which have made life a lot easier. So primarily, I got these in Aldi in the middle aisle. Uh, they're really, really strong magnets. And it's absolutely perfect for the plates and the cutlery, as you can see. And I even went wild and got another couple more for the sides here. I made this little cabinet because last year I got really, really sick of all my flies being all over the place. So I've got this little thing going on now. So I've got all sorts of little drawers. Now, just in case there's any doubt, that's a salmon. So I drew that to remind me so that basically when I'm in bed in the van, a lot of the time my head is here and this fella is right opposite me. So I'm going to be able to lie in bed and look at that and manifest it onto the end of my line. All right, so in my box here, I've got a lamb shoulder. Now I haven't really set about this. I've just had a couple of little slices of it. I thought I would save it for my lunch today. So since it's very fatty, which is not a bad thing in my opinion, I'm going to fry it and heat it up so it'll be nice and nice and warming. What do you reckon, Carl? Do you want to taste? Mm, I think that's probably probably certain. Mm, do it now. Mm, nice and that. Mm, tasty stuff.
now. Well, I came out of the water to change my GoPro batteries and I decided just to whip my waders off. I think that's enough. I'm absolutely freezing today. I've fished that pool really thoroughly. I knew that was going to be the story of today, just fishing that pool. And it's worked out quite well with the other rod not really having the gear to be able to get in there. So I've had the free run of it all day. And I think I fished it pretty thoroughly. I've been, I mean, I've lost a lot of flies today. So all of those house bricks that I tied, I'm going to have to go back and tie some new ones because the river claimed loads of those. But I knew that was going to be the case as well, so I don't mind that. At least um, at least I was getting down into where any fish might actually be. I wasn't just skating over the top of them. So yeah, I feel like I've, I've had a chance today. I, I don't feel like I've wasted my money. I didn't plan to fish the river tight early this year, but I thought, you know what it is, with the conditions being as they were, you know, I did have a chance and I felt all day like I've been in with a chance. So yeah, I don't feel like I've had a wasted day and I was desperate for a day out. So it's really nice to have got out and blown some cobwebs off. I don't know when I'll be out again. I'll be waiting for a little bit more water, probably on another river. Um, it's the forecast for the next week or so it looks pretty dry. So it doesn't look like there's going to be much fishing. I think I'm, I'm happy to wait for it to warm up a little bit anyway. Uh, I didn't plan to do a lot of early spring fishing this year and you know obviously since I got one in the bag uh, that takes that pressure away so it's quite a nice feeling to be honest. Uh, yeah so when I'm out next well you can come with me and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll touch a fish who knows.